वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ सी गुरु राज्य गुरु इट्स गुरु से सक्सेस मंत्र आज हम बात करेंगे चैप्टर नंबर फाइव इट्स इनकम ऑफ अदर पर्सन इंक्लूडेड इन एस एस टोटल इनकम इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज क्लबिंग ऑफ इनकम एंड देर आर टोटल फाइव सेक्शन स्टार्टेड विद सेक्शन सिक्सटी टू सेक्शन सिक्सटी फोर एंड इन सी एंड सी एस इंटर एग्जामिनेशन वेटेज ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इक्वल्स टू नियर बाई फाइव मार्क्स सो लेट स्टार्ट विद सेक्शन सिक्सटी सेक्शन सिक्सटी से इज देट इफ देर इज अ ट्रांसफर ऑफ इनकम विदाउट ट्रांसफर ऑफ असेट then such income shall be clubbed in the hands of transferor example is that suppose i transferred my salary income to my wife for the purpose of tax evasion then such remuneration received by my wife shall be clubbed in the hands of transferor that is me next section 61 section 61 says that transfer of income with transfer of asset here income is only clubbed if there is a revocable transfer of asset otherwise income shall not be clubbed in the hands of transferor so let's understand what's the meaning of revocable transfer if there is a provision of retransfer to transferor and if there is a right to reassume power to such transferor then and then only it is called as revocable transfer and section 61 is attracted and clubbing provision is attracted what's the meaning of revocable transfer it's simply called as if there is a direct or indirect benefit to transferor then section 61 is attracted there is a exception of section 61 or revocable transfer is if there is a transfer if transfer is not revocable during the lifetime of the beneficiary of the transferee in and if there is a transfer before 1st april 1961 and it's not revocable within the 6 years then in such two exceptional cases there is a no clubbing it means clubbing provision is not attracted next section 64 sub section 1 clause 2 remuneration to spouse if there is a remuneration to spouse from a concern in which individual and and his relative have a 20% or more voting rights in a particular concern and if the remuneration is received by a spouse then such remuneration shall be clubbed in the hands of that individual having a substantial interest exception exception means there is a no clubbing where remuneration is received due to a professional or technical skill of the spouse let's understand this provision with the example suppose there is an individual individual has individual including his relative have a more than or equals to 20% voting rights in particular concern and from such concern remuneration is received by another spouse without any professional or technical skill if such remuneration is received by spouse without any professional skill then such income shall be clubbed in the hands of that individual who has a substantial interest an exception of this section is that if such remuneration is received with any professional or technical skill then clubbing provision is not attracted next section 64 sub section 1 clause 4 there is a direct transfer to spouse if in if there is any income is arising to spouse from asset transferred to spouse without an adequate consideration then such income shall always be clubbed in the hands of transferor exception of these sections are if there is a transfer with adequate consideration second if transfer is made under an agreement to live apart next if the asset are transferred before marriage or if such asset is acquired with the help of pin money then in such cases clubbing provision is not attracted under section 64 sub section 1 clause 4 next section 64 sub section 1 clause 6 sorry clause 7 income arising to spouse from asset to any person or aop for a direct or indirect benefit to spouse then income shall be clubbed in the hands of transfer what's the difference between the clause 4 and clause 7 here the main difference is that uh, under clause 4 there is a direct transfer to spouse and under clause 7 there is a indirect transfer to spouse means first asset is transferred to either any person or aop then after that Uh, there is a direct or indirect benefit to spouse so we can clear cut understand that the difference of clause 4 and clause 7 is that under clause 4 there is a direct transfer to spouse and under clause 7 there is a indirect transfer to spouse next section 64 sub section 1 clause 6 there is a direct transfer to son's wife if income is arising from the asset transferred to son's wife without adequate consideration then such income shall be clubbed in the hands of transferor next section 64 subsection 1 clause 3 if income is arising to son's wife 
by from an asset transferred to any person or AOP for a direct or indirect benefit to son's wife, then such income shall be clubbed in the hands of transferor. What's the difference between clause six and clause three? Here the main difference is again the, again the same. Under clause six, there is a direct transfer to son's wife, and under clause three, under clause three, there is an indirect transfer to son's wife. So if there is a direct or indirect benefit to son's wife, then clubbing provision is attracted and income shall be clubbed in the hands of transferor. Let's start with section 64, subsection 1a, minors income. It's a very important uh, section for exam perspective. Minors income is clubbed in the total income of dead parent whose income is greater before including minors income. And exemption under section 10, subsection 32 is also provided maximum rupees 1500 per minor child. Here, the restriction of number of child is not applicable. Exception, exception means there is a no clubbing in case of minor's income. That is, income is taxable in the hands of minor himself or herself. The exceptions are, if income is earned by applying a manual work, skill, talent, knowledge, etc. Or if there is an income of minor who is suffering from disabilities under section 80U. So in, the, in two exceptional cases, income shall not be clubbed in the hands of parent but income is taxable in the hands of minor himself or herself. And last section of the chapter is section 64 subsection 2. If there is a conversion of self-acquired property into the property of HUF, suppose there is an individual property of mine and I transfer such property to the HUF, then such income shall be clubbed in the hands of the transferor. So here the case is divided into, section is divided into two parts for the purpose of understanding that is before effect before partition and after partition. So before partition, income is clubbed in the hands of transferor, and after partition, income received by spouse of individual is clubbed in the hands of transferor or income in the hands of individual because it is treated as indirect transfer to spouse after partition. So, so here I conclude this chapter started in section 60 to section 64. Uh, hope for the best, it helps. It helps you a lot in the examination. Thanks for watching. Please keep connected for more videos. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys.